to show you. Um, <clears throat> Romani had said that she was playing with the Chronodex system. And I kind of experimented with this quite a bit um, last winter, kind of the end of winter time. And I realized right away that as far as planning my day, like the night before, looking ahead to plan, it doesn't work for me just because of all the overlapping schedules. For me to be able to keep that straight in my head, I have to have a vertical layout of what's overlapping and you know where Mike is, if he can help you know run people. Um, and especially this year, our the bo couple of the boys have really different school schedules this year, and there's not going to be busing available for them. <sighs> so, and I'm going to show you um, what the daily school run looks like on a piece of paper because I finally broke down and wrote it all out yesterday. Um, so planning ahead, Chronodex doesn't work for me. <clears throat> and I'll show you, that's why I was going to show you that school run schedule so you could kind of see for whatever reason my brain likes that vertical layout. However, if One Book July taught me anything, two things that it taught me, it taught me a lot, but the two big things that it taught me I have to do a brain dump every once in a while. No matter how much I write in my daily pages and keep track of everything, things fall through the cracks if I don't sit down with a piece of paper and just do a big brain dump. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing it taught me is that, especially with the school schedule being as weird as it's going to be this year, I have to make an effort to do a daily review. And I know myself enough to know that if I don't have something structured, even just a little bit structured, to to use as a format to do that daily review, I won't do it. I, I won't. I will look at the day, uh, you know, I'll sit at the end of the day for five minutes and I will look at the day and all I will see is everybody else's stuff. And I have to have that stuff on my schedule because I'm the one doing the driving. Okay, until November, until November. One of the boys will have his license in a car in November. So I just have to make it to November. So I, when I look ahead, I need that vertical format. As I'm looking back and reviewing my day, I realize that my brain does think like a clock. I, that's just how I picture the day. Because the school schedule is so chaotic, number one, and number two, because I know that I have to have something slightly structured or I won't do a daily review. And three, because my brain works in a review process in that clock-like fashion, that was why I set up this system. Um, it's in my field note size um, Christopher Columbus notebook. So it's small. It takes me like five minutes at the end of the day. And because things are so weird at the beginning of this school year, I know that if I don't do a daily review, just my stuff, stuff that I need to get done, is going to fall through the cracks. Um, and you'll see on the, the daily layout of the school runs, I'm in the van a lot. I am going to be in there more than I ever have been, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm a little freaked out by that. Um, and hockey season obviously starts right after school starts, like right after school starts. So Mike's going to be in and out of town a lot. Um, so September's really going to be <laughs> interesting. He's gone more than half the month of September and school starts um, the week before September starts. <laughs> So, I'm going to show you how I've been doing a daily review, just of my things, so that I can get in the habit of doing it before the schedule explodes, and uh, so that I can make an effort to find those little niches of time that I know I'm going to have to find to be able to get my things done, because if I'm not careful, my stuff won't get done. That's all there is to it. And I have classes to finish and work stuff to do and writing that I want to do and reading that I want to do and and on and on and on and on. So, so I'm trying this to see as a daily review how it works. Now what I've done, um, I'll put the links down below for this. <clears throat> I've tried several different Chronodex and Chronodex-like layouts. Okay, The original Chronodex you can find at Patrick Ng's website. Um, it's called Scription. Um, links will be down below. And I, my brain didn't work too well with that layout, but part of that was just because I was still putting everybody else's stuff into that layout at the end of the day. I don't need to put Mike's schedule in there. I don't need to put the boys' schedules in there because I have that on my daily looking ahead. Here's what I have to do 
today as I look at it in the morning. At the end of the day, I just need to focus on what of my stuff I did and did not get done so that I can try to find and maintain some kind of balance. Okay, so that layout didn't quite work for me. That's just my brain. I tried several different layouts. Romani has come up with several different really cool layouts, and I will link to her channel down below. Um, she's going to be posting some Chronodex videos as well, and so is Miss Vicky B. So I will put her link for her channel down below as well. Um, I don't know how many layouts Romani is going to show, um, but I've, I've played with several that she had kind of put together. And then just the other day, she pointed me to Kate Smith's blog. Again, linky link down below. Um, and that layout, it just clicked for my head immediately. Um, and I'll show you why. There's, I tend to get up early and stay up late, not so much lately because I've been really sick for a good stretch of time now. So um, what I'm going to show you aren't, aren't going to be too indicative as far as the, the layout and the coloring and what it's going to look like once school starts, but I will definitely be revisiting this so you can see what it looks like after the chaotic schedule really begins, okay? But the, the layout that Kate Smith has come up with just clicked in my head immediately. So that is what I'm using, and I have combined that with just the first page of the um, life mapping mobile inserts from DIY Fish. Um, now, several people had asked for a video about those. I'm still playing with that setup so that I can kind of wrap my head around it, um, and then I will definitely be doing a video of that. It might not be for another couple weeks yet. We'll just kind of see how the chaotic stuff goes here. So I have used Kate Smith's little dial, uh, printed it out, and the first page of Fish's Life Mapping mobile inserts is a PDF that you can edit. So she has taken like a field note size page. It's broken into nine boxes, and you can go in and label each box however you want. Okay, and then they print out four to a page. I'm printing on letter size. So on letter size, they print out four to a page. You enter in those cells whatever you want those categories to be labeled as in that first box, and then the other ones autofill for you. So what I did was I labeled each box as a category of things that are just mine. I did put a box on there for the boys, and I did leave one box blank so that stuff that the boys have to do that I am at, like practices or parent-teacher conferences or, you know, activities at their schools. Obviously, those are things I'm doing too, so there's a box on there for the boys and a blank box just for any overflow, you know, as I can kind of tweak it as I go here. So I'll show you how I labeled those um, so that I can kind of see as the days go by where I may be able to carve out time to do a little more of something or a little less of something else, you know, the give and take of time there, um, because there's a finite amount of it, so it's got to come from somewhere. So, very long intro, guys. Sorry about that, but I really wanted to explain everything before I just showed it to you, because I didn't want it to be confusing. <clears throat> I am still getting well, so this may be confusing anyway, because I have an epic amount of head fog still. <laughs> So you guys all take it easy and um, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions, if you think this is absolutely crazy, you know, <laughs> you know, the way I'm doing it, uh, let me know, okay? And if you're using any kind of Chronodex or Chronodex-like system, um, let us know. Post some pictures, throw a video up um, so that we can see what you're doing. And then make sure you also go check out Romani's channel and Miss Vicky B's channel because, as I said, they're posting videos as well. Um, and they're both using different systems than what I'm using. So this is a good opportunity for anybody who's ever been even slightly interested or intrigued by the Chronodex system to see it being used, the three different Chronodex-like systems all being used. Okay? Thank you so much again, guys. You have a fantastic day. All right, so here is what has been going on, um, kind of the hows and the whys of my using a Chronodex, Chronodex to track my time. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you why. Um, this is a kind of a mock layout of what a normal school day, normal, is going to look like here this year. A uh, little bit chaotic. Um, two of the boys have a different school schedule. I know I've mentioned it a million times, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So I have six school runs to do every day um, because they don't all have busing available both to school and home. Um, like we live too close to Jack's school for him to be able to get on a bus and it's just far enough away that him walking it uh, Especially when it's really crummy outside is not ideal. So So this is what Just the running for school looks like not that part um, now come November 
several of the boys will be starting driving pretty much all at the same time and they'll have at least one car. So some of this running will be eliminated at the time. Um, and you know, having to run Dakota to work will be eliminated at the time because it'll be his car. So now I haven't put any tasks on here. This is just a mock-up of the schedule portion. This is why I need to get in the habit of tracking my time because what happens, and I learned this last school year, I have Mike's schedule over here. I have all the running I need to do for the boys over here. Any appointments, like if anybody has any checkups, anything time sensitive, all goes over here. Okay? Now, especially with Mike being gone as much as he's going to be gone this hockey season, this is all going to be me for the most part. Okay? So, as you can see, I have a little chunk of time in here where I can get some work done, and I'll still have Liam. Okay? So, he's home during the day. So, he and I will have this chunk of time here this little bit of time here and then after school lets out if we're not you know helping anybody with homework supper you know that kind of stuff school activities whatever that's all gonna fall down in here now because there's all of this going on I need to make a very proactive effort to not let my things slip through the cracks okay and I know me and I know that I will get so busy with everybody else's stuff that, you know, I'll know that there are things that are really important that I need to get done. And if they're not overly time sensitive, like classes that I'm taking online, some of those are time sensitive, some of them are not. I'll let two, three, four days go by without even thinking about those things because I'll be so wrapped up in all of this that, you know, my brain will be really busy and I won't be thinking about, oh gosh, I, you know, need to carve out 15 minutes to do this, that, or the other, all right? So, <clears throat> because we have all these things going on in multiple places at multiple times, depending on whether or not Mike is in town, I need this vertical layout so that I can see if there are any overlaps, especially in the after-school portion. If we have multiple kids who have to be in multiple places at pretty darn close to the same times, I need to be able to see that overlap. And it could be there have been school days where there are three or four things going on down here really close to the same time. So I need to make sure if Mike is in town that he is at some of those school things, you know, we split them up. He goes to a couple of them, I go to the others. Um, if my brother is able to help us out running people or, you know, taking somebody and, you know, going and doing something with them, I need to be able to see that stuff in advance. And for my brain, I need that laid out vertically so that anything that's overlapping is if I had something like, let's say he had to work, let's say somebody had a fun fair at school, let's say somebody had a sports event, those things would all be laid out next to each other so that I could see right away. So looking ahead, this vertical layout is very good for me. My concern is that my stuff is going to fall through the cracks. And I can't allow that to happen. First of all, I just have a lot going on. I have to make sure I'm staying on top of everything. And secondly, I'll start to feel like I am not being productive because I'll be doing all of this. I, I know that I will kind of let this overtake everything. And I will start to feel like, what the heck am I doing with my days? I'm not accomplishing anything. And I know it doesn't make any sense probably to anybody else, but for my brain, I immediately kick into this, oh, I'm being lazy, or oh, I, I need to do a better job of making time for my stuff too. So this is an effort for me to try to find some balance, to find it and maintain it. So when I'm looking ahead, this vertical layout works very well for me. When I played with the Chronodex last winter, I found right away that just because of all the multiple things that might be going on at the same times, I couldn't use, I couldn't overlap enough people, enough different colors for color coding in that Chronodex without it confusing me. But I do know that looking ahead, I like this vertical layout. Looking back at my day, my brain thinks like a clock. So after Romani said she was playing with it and she and I got discussing it, I started playing with it myself and here let me get that out of the way and this is where I started like I said in the intro two things I learned from one book July the two big things were I need to do a brain dump occasionally so that I stop letting things just tumble around in my brain I need to get them out of my head that's not what my brain is for my brain is for thinking not for storage so I learned real quickly in one book July the value of just making a big list and dumping everything all out of your brain the other thing I learned is, for me, the importance of a daily review. It doesn't have to take more than five minutes at the end of the day, and I need to focus just on my stuff. What of my stuff did I get done, and what did I not get done? 
So this is where I started. This is the Chronodex from Patrick, Patrick Ng. Um, and I'll put all the links down below, like I said in the intro. I have been going back and forth between putting stuff on here like the bank and the groceries. Well, I did do the bank and the groceries. Um, supper. I did make supper that night. Um, on and off, I'm not putting those kinds of things on there. I'm really making an effort, trying to make an effort to keep this about just my stuff. Where did, where did the time go during the day that was spent on my things? And as you can see, like right in here, I really, really struggled to get my brain to wrap around coloring this in properly. So I have some things that are overlapping. Generally, that to me would mean multitasking. So while I was making supper, I was yeah, answering Facebook messages. However, that is not what was going on here. When I look at it, that's what I think I meant, but I know darn well that that morning from 7 until 7.30, I was answering Facebook messages, and that evening from 6 until 7.30, I was making supper and uh, the boys and I were cleaning up the kitchen. So I only know that because <laughs> I remember messing that up. I kept messing this up. Um, I did it quite a few times. And after talking with Romani several times, I realized that what I needed was a delineation between AM and PM right in this area because most of the overlap in my morning is falling between 6, 7 AM and noon. And then obviously if you follow the clock back around, that'd be 6 PM until, you know, 9 or 10 at night. That's where I had a lot of, I had AM things and PM things overlapping. And I needed something different because I wasn't doing a good enough job when I was filling these in. I was spending too much time thinking about how to fill it in properly and I wasn't focusing on the review portion. And I expect there to be a learning curve because this is, this is new for me, even though I played with it last winter. Um, but I just kept screwing it up. So I will show you. <clears throat> See, like here there were, I did a little bit better here. You know, here I recorded a video, here I edited that video, here I was doing planning and project notes, and then the blue is just driving. I drove two of the boys to drive right, I picked them up from drive right, I took Dakota to work, I picked Dakota up from work. And I didn't put any of the housework in here, I didn't put any of the, you know, cooking in here, nothing like that. I may put those things in if it's something like I went to the bank and got groceries. Well, I did go do that, that's where a portion of my time went that day. So because that was my time, I may put that in here. But can you see why I don't, let me find one that's a little, here. This was when I got sick. So some of these are really, really off. Um, but here's one that's fairly blank. Here is what I did first of all to try to remind myself to separate the AM and PM so I stopped overlapping them when I shouldn't have. Let me see if I can move us over a little bit. I darkened the line between seven and 12 so that I would remember this inside portion was all supposed to be for AM and that this outside portion was all supposed to be for PM. Okay, and that did help. That helped. Now, I was doing this while I had pneumonia, so <laughs> I uh, had pneumonia brain. Um, here's another one, like, sick. So, y y you can see, you know, when I was sick, I wasn't filling a whole lot in, but it, I was putting in just my time. You know, this day I did the bedding, the cleaning, and Liam and I went for a walk. So I marked all of that in. I know some days I'll put it in there, some days I won't. But what I've noticed, like especially this day, this, I was still sick, obviously. Mike took Liam, the county next to where we live now is the county that Mike and I grew up in, and they have a big county fair every year. So Mike took Liam to the fair this night. Everybody else was gone. So I had three hours totally to myself. So you can see here where I have red and blue and then brown. Red is Mike's stuff and my, my color coding system in this is the exact same as my color coding system in my, my planner, okay? So red is Mike's stuff, blue is for any of the boys, and then brown, pink, and purple tend to be mine depending on what they're for. So brown is just my stuff like reading, um, writing stuff for the book. Pink is usually planning and the blog and YouTube. And purple is projects that I have going that involve other people. Okay, so the brown here, I caught up on notes from Romani's One Frog Sing class. I was reading Shadow of Night, and I was working on a drawing for my journaling time. So can you see how those colors overlap there? 
when I was using this for everybody's schedules when I tried last winter, first of all, I'm using every color that I have available to me to color code already. And that means using blue, just boys in general. And then I usually put their initial next to it in my planner so that I can see blue. I know it's for a boy. Well, which boy is it? I look at the letter. I know which boy it's for. When I can only use blue for one thing in the label for it, you know, drop off, you know, V&L at fair. So I dropped two of the boys off at the fair that day. I can do it in my label, but it was so many overlapping colors that it just kind of made my brain seize up. So this is what I was doing. And after visiting several different routes of going about this, Romany showed me on Kate Smith's blog, um, and I'll put the link down below, um, what she calls the artist circle. And let me show you what that looks like. I saw this, I filled one in for practice, and this just clicked for me. What I did actually, just so I'd have some practice, because I need to get this down pat, before school starts because I know that my stuff is going to start falling through the cracks if I'm not really careful about doing a daily review. And it's a quick way for me to just look and see, is there a decent, to my mind at least, what is a decent balance of time spent during the day that is either pink, brown, or purple? Because that's all my stuff. And I want to make sure that those things are balanced as well. I want to make sure I'm giving just as much attention to things that are just mine, like classes, as projects that I'm doing with other people, which would be purple. I know that if I don't make a little bit of time each week to just do some reading or some knitting or now some drawing, that I start to get really kind of antsy. I, I need to carve out 15 minutes, you know, here and there to just do a little bit of doodling or a little bit of reading. So if I'm not seeing any brown, I know I'm not getting of my own, any of my own personal like writing or knitting or reading or drawing stuff done. And I don't expect it to be big blocks of time like this. This was because I was really sick and Mike had taken Liam to the fair for a good chunk of time and everybody else was gone. So, so what Romany showed me <clears throat> was this. Look, what I love about this, and again, I'll put the link down below. What I love about this is there is an inner ring, okay? And then you, there's a thin ring in the middle here and then there's an outer ring. So the way I'm using it is this inner ring is all midnight to 12 p.m. So this is all midnight morning hours to noon. This ring I leave blank because that helps me delineate between my a.m. and my p.m. And then this is noon onward, 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight. And then if I have things overlapping, like let's say I'm doing the bedding, um, but at the same time I was also answering emails, you know, I can mark in, well, for this you know, chunk of time I was doing the bedding, but then I can use that empty ring and mark it in pink for time that I spent answering emails, okay? Now, so that I will put, it's called Artist Circle, it's from Kate Smith's blog, I'll put the link down below. This sheet, let me show you one that's blank. <clears throat> this sheet is from DIY Fish um, Life Mapping Mobile System. It's a new insert that she just released. Several people have asked for a video on this, and like I said in the intro, I'm still wrapping my head around the entire set of this insert. This is just the first page. But one thing I noticed when I was doing these, I went through and filled several of these in. I redid them in here, just so that I could get the practice. So what I found was with these kind of being labeled all willy-nilly like that, and because I was putting other stuff in there that was other people's stuff, which I don't want to do, it's such a habit, and I'm trying to break that habit because I need to learn to focus for five minutes at the end of the day just on my stuff. Um, because they were kind of labeled all over, I thought, gosh, I wish I had categories to put those things in. And not a day after I was thinking about that, Fish released this. So this file is in her Etsy shop. This is just the first page of it, and the first page is a PDF file that you can edit. So you can change these headings in these boxes to anything you want okay and they print out like I said in the uh, intro um, there are four of these on a sheet and you just fill in on the first one and the other three auto fill for you so these are the categories of stuff that are my things okay so let me show you on a blank page so any reading I did that day any work for the blog or for YouTube any writing I did any journaling I did 
The boys one is anything that I did with the boys. So if they have a sporting event, if they have parent-teacher conferences, if they have like the fun fair at their school, something that I would go to with them, I would put that in there because obviously that's where part of my time went. Any projects I worked on that day, any of the back-end web development classes I'm taking, and then that one is blank just for miscellaneous stuff that I did that day. Okay, and then the artist circle, I print it out, I shrank it down a bit, um, put them all in a Word document so they print out, I think I get 20 of them on a sheet, and then I just trimmed them out and glued them right on. So there is another box, uh, maybe I have a blank one, yeah, see, there is another box in here on Fish's uh, sheet that you can put a quote in there, you can put a picture in there, um, and then the date goes right up in here, but I took those cells out because I knew I would be covering them up with this. So here is how this has been going. I, I love this. This has worked. Practicing going back and filling in that week, week and a half's worth of pages that I had, they were a little off because I was really sick, so they're not perfect, but being able to mark in, you know, 7 to 7.30, it's pink, so I know it's something either social media or the blog or YouTube. Well, 7 to 7.30, I answered Facebook messages. You know, this one... <clears throat> um, what was this one? Oh yeah, I did the, um, I worked on my August planner setup. So that I kind of put down here because it was planning. And then this, so here's all my AM stuff. The center ring I left blank because I didn't have any multitasking things really going on. And then uh, this outer circle is PM. And that's how that has been going for me. And then I have the categories where I can write in. Like here that day I posted my uh, setup for this notebook on YouTube and on the blog. Um, from 8.30 to 9, I did social media, so that's marked right here. Uh, from, or I'm sorry, that's marked aw, over here. Um, you know, anything I did for drop Dakota off at work, pick Dakota up at work, cleaned out the van and made lunch. See, some days I'm throwing those things in there and some days I'm not. I'm still trying to find my, my happy medium for that. But this is how this one is working for me. And because it's small enough, it doesn't take me very long to fill in, um, Sitting down and looking at one of these blank like this, literally, you guys, it is not taking me more than five minutes at the end of the day to sit down with my daily page in my um, in my creme brulee notebook. Um, I'm using the DIY Fish Midori Traveler's Notebook version 2.2 inserts, so I have a page. Uh, or a day per page. Sorry, I'm having a little brain cramp right now. <laughs> I have a day per page, so I can sit down for seriously five minutes at the end of the day, look at that page. What did I do when for my time? And that just for some reason helps me filter through everybody else's stuff that is written on those pages because it's stuff that I had to do. I had to drive them here or drive them there or make sure I bought this for them or you know whatever the case may be. Um, helps me filter through all of that stuff and see was there anything on that particular day that I needed to get done that was mine that I did not get done? Was there anything extra that was mine that I found time and I did it and I wasn't intending to? So that I can go back and say, oh, I had scheduled to do something on Saturday. Here it's Wednesday, doing my review. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got time to do that thing. I can go back into my weekly page in my DIY fish inserts and mark it off and it's done. And then I don't look at it Saturday and start to redo that thing. That's, that's essentially what this is doing for me. It's number one, it's going to help me find and maintain some balance in the midst of all of this. Because <laughs> I'm going to need it. Number two, it helps me to filter through all the other stuff on those daily planner pages and focus just on what is my stuff. So that I feel like I'm getting stuff done. I know where my time has gone and I know that I am the time that I do have to work on things, I am balancing out between stuff that is my own, for my own personal good, like reading and writing and drawing, um, stuff that is for work good, like, you know, projects that involve other people, coding, that kind of thing. Um, I need to make sure I'm balancing that stuff out. And if I look at one of these full of notes for the day and tasks and my priority tasks up here and, oh, so-and-so said, you know, he needs poster board for that project and, you know, I need to, his schedule changed and, oh, okay, Mike's going to be leaving a day earlier than we thought for his next road trip and all of that stuff gets written in here. And when I look at this at the end of the day to see, okay, what fell through the cracks, what didn't I get done, I don't see that. I will miss stuff all the time because I'm all caught up in everybody else's stuff. And for some reason, this really helps me to drill down through all of the other stuff and focus just on my things. 
So that is how that is going for me so far. I am really liking the categories and I'm really enjoying this layout right here. I This just clicked immediately for me. So if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, make sure you check out Romani's channel and Miss Vicky B's channel because they are also using um, Chronodex and variations thereof. I think all three of us are using something different so that you can see how they work differently for different people, which I think is fantastic. Um, and then I did not redo, Romani just posted her Chronodex videos today. This one is also going up today. Um, I had recorded it yesterday and I was so loopy when I did it. I, it sincerely made no sense when I was watching it to edit it. So I deleted it and figured we'd start fresh today. Um, Romani does a great job of showing how she colors hers in. So because I just changed to this the day before yesterday, even though I filled a lot of these in for practice, um, I'm going to give this another two weeks and we are all three of us posting videos again on August 28th. So I will probably show you in that one how I fill this in and how I fill the categories in because I will have been doing it for another couple weeks and I am less likely to make mistakes then. <laughs> so you guys, um, holler if you have any questions, make sure you check out Romani's and Vicky's videos as well. And uh, if you play with this or if you use this already, you know, let us know. Post it on Facebook or, you know, throw a video up on YouTube. Let us know 